funny? Yes. If you are a longtime listener of this podcast, then you no doubt know two important things about me. Number one, of course, my undying love of traditional Japanese kabuki theater. Constantly, constantly going off about that. And two, that I am a lover, nay, a connoisseur of history. Yes. I I am a regular historicatron, which is a technical term that only us historicatrons use. But I'm also a storyteller with my own unique style, and so what I like to do is I like to get a story from the history books and sort of rework it into my own unique voice. And that is what this is, another installment of our long-running series known as Steve's Historical Approximations, or SHAP, as I like to annoyingly call it yes. constantly all the time, screaming it from the rafters, whether I, whether anyone wants to hear it or not. SHAP, it's taking over the nation. Hashtag SHAP, people. Let's get this thing trending. Let's do it. So this <laughs> week's this week's story is about... Uh, how a famous inventor's fake death led to the creation of a legendary award. Okay. It's a story deeply rooted in history, which is what I wanted because the last time, the last time we did Shap, we did a story from my childhood, which I comically tried to disguise as an important moment in history. And it was good and I liked it and I thought yes. it was funny. I, it just didn't completely fit with our usual Steve's historical approximations. It's kind of like the Simpsons uh, Halloween special. I, 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 I think we could squeeze through a court case if you don't keep explaining it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Just, you know, just, so, uh, just trying to fix things here. You know, just trying to yeah. make sure everything's fixed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so that was our last shap, and so this week it's back to the old history books. We are going old school this time around. Very excited about this story. This, this story just came out so good. At first I had a tiny little story, and then I, learned, and then I, I, I delved more deeply, and it became bigger and bigger and bigger. So this week we're talking about Alfred Nobel. Okay. Al, basically, his name is Alfred Noble. What a great name. Yeah. Alfred mm -hmm. Noble. With a name like that, you kind of have to grow up being a bit of a dick, right? <laughs> yes. Like Philip Douchebag or John Vagina Sniffer. You know, sometimes your name dictates what your life is going to be like. Yeah, he, he's the kind of person that's somewhere around the age of 13 uttered the phrase of, but father, there will not be anybody left to oppress. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like, and being yeah. really upset with it. Yeah, at some point in his life, he definitely owned a pony. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, Alfred Nobel was Swedish, right? He, he was born in 1833 to a not-so-successful inventor and engineer. Alfred Nobel was one of eight kids, and they were all starving. Because, again, uh, Alfred Nobel's dad wasn't a success. And, and, and also, it's 1833, and he has eight kids. Yeah. So all, all the kids were born starving, so much so that out of the eight kids, maybe about half of them got to be adults. Well, that's not so bad. a lot of them... Four kids, yes. that's still a lot of fucking kids. Yeah, yeah. But, so a lot of these kids died. Now, Now here's where I kind of stray from history. Because in the history books, they don't say that the Nobel family ate the weaker kids. <laughs> but the history books also don't say that they didn't. No. So I guess Alfred Nobel dash cannibal question mark 
You know, I, I, I if anything, I can just trump it. You know, a lot of people are saying that Alfred Nobel ate his children. A lot of people are saying that. I hear a lot of people talking. A lot of people talking about this yeah. online. So, so the family was so poor that the dad, whose name was Emmanuel no- Nobel, wannabe inventor, wannabe engineer, he, he one day was just, fuck this shit, I'm out. And he just took off. And he's yeah. like, hey, I got I to gotta go and find a job, any job, anywhere, somewhere. I just, it, we need money, so I guess I'm just off. So he left, and he eventually found himself in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Uh, so he went from Sweden to St. Petersburg, where he ev- eventually got a job with a, a tool manufacturing company. And yeah. there, there, in the, while working at the tool manufacturing company, he invented, get this, Emmanuel Noble invented fucking plywood really nice okay yeah. he's just working he's just working and he's like oh shit i invented a wood <laughs> yes i foresee a day in the future where my invention plywood will fill home depot stores I personally do not understand why we are not building homes out of plastic these days. Like all the yeah. plastic that we're putting in the landfills and everything, like you you can make you can make plastic flame retardant. You can make homes that will not burn down. You know? Yeah. And and we would yeah. solve the whole ecology problem by just taking all that shit that gets thrown out and building homes out of it. That's a that's an excellent point. You know, you know they, we already got, we have all this shit. Yeah, and they would be modular, and they could like they could put to be be put together like about as easily as Legos. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like like IKEA could sell homes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You yeah, would get you would get a so. little Allen wrench to put your home together. Yeah. But you can have a wall yes. that's all one solid piece and all molded and it all laid out where the where the nut and bolt goes and you use your Allen wrench and tighten it up and you got a house. Yeah. I do like those occasional s- s- stories here about Stop. you know various companies that are able to uh to like uh, 3D print a house. Yeah. I like that. I hope that, that turns into a thing. So yeah, Emmanuel Noble invented plywood. I foresee a day in the future where my invention will fill Home Depot stores. The strange stink of plywood will assault your nostrils once you enter. Yeah. And the stores will be so full of my new invention that the store will be ridiculously huge. People will be lost. Couples will spend entire weekends in that infernal store. Yes. That's a 115% true fake quote right there. You would have to bring your Sherpa because you can't, yeah. cause you can't find anybody who actually works there. <laughs> yeah. So suddenly the Nobel family is crazy rich. Yeah. And suddenly they have a shit ton of money. Because of the so plywood? Now, they, got, they got crazy rich off of the plywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so out of nowhere, they're like, oh, no, like, we might be homeless. We can't afford to feed you children. And, oh, shit, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to turn you poor, emaciated kids into pompous, ruffle-wearing fancy lads now. <laughs> Come on, kids. You kids are all fancy boys now. Here, Alfred Nobel, here's a tutor. Here, go to France and learn. You're a fancy lad now. Yeah. So Alfred Nobel grows up to to be a chemist and a businessman and inventor, just like his pop pop. You know, I am in business. I am a businessman. I'm inventing things, and I'm so proud. And he's successful, and he's making money. So, so good for Alfred Nobel. Yes, good for him. Yeah. But 
Alfred Nobel doesn't want to just be successful. Oh, no. Oh, no, my friend. He's already successful. See, his daddy Emmanuel Nobel, he invented freaking plywood, and that shit done changed the game, son. <laughs> that shit done changed the game. So Alfred Nobel wants to do that, too. So cut to laboratory montage. Yes, things, yes. And things, things bubbling and, uh, and test tubes and beakers and yeah, late and night he, sweating. And he lifts up a beaker to the light and stares at it really, really seriously. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We well, need that shot. Yeah, there's a calendar and pages are flying off of the calendar, and then Alfred Nobel's asleep with a, with, you know, with a beaker in his hand, and then he wakes up, and maybe like there's an '80s song playing. Maybe we could rewrite it for the for the situation. So, you're the best inventor around. <laughs> no one's ever invent you down. Well, but there's also so, got to be that shot of like pure frustration. So he's like he's like with his beakers and everything, and y- you know yep. the the good elaborate sets where it's going where the liquid is going through coils and you know it's yep. like it's like yep. mousetrap with fluids, and he's just yeah, looking might... at it and staring at it, and all of a sudden he just bangs his hands on the desk. Yeah, and then also because this is because this is a uh, a montage. We may have to add in a can of talking mixed vegetables. Yes, yes. But the can of mixed vegetables at first is really, really sick. And it's also really, yeah. really shy. So it doesn't talk that much. It just doesn't have much energy. And, you know, he, he keeps contemplating the can of mixed vegetables. And he gives it, he gives it a, an injection right, yeah. into, right into the lid. He gives it an injection, and like we keep getting cutbacks to the can of mixed vegetables until like the final scene, the the can of mixed the mixed vegetables has more vibrant color, you know? Yeah. Like maybe we do yeah. that thing where everything is in color, but the mixed vegetables is black and white, and now it yeah. like, becomes color and oh, it worked. Whatever he was working on, it worked. And the can of mixed vegetables, it's it's now healed. And they, and they hold it and they pass it around and they rub its little its little ribbing on the side, like like yeah. like it was a puppy that they just saved. There, I turned it up a little bit. And then finally, we get the moment. Eureka! Yes, I've done. I, Alfred Nobel, have have invented something that will change the world. I call it Boomy Sticks. No, that's that's <laughs> not good. What should I call it? Oh, Dinner Mints. Okay, close. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah, Alfred Alfred Nobel invented fucking dynamite. Nice. Okay. To blow up, the yeah. pl- To blow up the plywood, it was a very yeah. uh, passive aggressive invention. <laughs> yeah. Emmanuel Nobel invented a new kind of wood, and then his son invented a new and deadlier kind of explosion. Yeah. You know, the first thing he did with that, you know, once he had f- figured out how to make dynamite, you know, the first thing he did, right? Figured out how to have sex with it. No, nah, he blew up the toilets in his high school. Yeah, there you go. Who's the loser now, Dad? <laughs> My invention can blow up your invention, Dad. Man, the first thought that went through my head was Eric Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so cut to a number of years later. Alfred Nobel is super crazy fucking rich off of his invention, dynamite. Alfred Nobel's in his mid-50s now, super famous. And so, his late 50s, Alfred Nobel's younger brother, Ludwig Nobel, dies. Okay? I I, I don't don't think I believe any of that. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, so so Ludwig Nobel yeah. dies. Who knows how he dies? Let's say he was run over by a camel. It doesn't really matter. The point is Ludwig Nobel dies. But see, it's 1888, and there's no internet yet. So yeah. Ludwig Nobel dies, but a number of major newspapers fuck up and think, oh, my God, Ludwig Nobel died? That's the inventor of dynamite. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Did they accidentally print in the newspaper a picture of Glenn Strange? No. No. But out, but but the younger brother died, and a shit ton of newspapers across the world thought that it was Alfred Nobel who died. Uh-huh. And so, yes, all the newspapers are like, oh, Ludwig Nobel just died, the inventor of dynamite. Don't worry, we'll be writing a huge article about his life and achievements soon. And Alfred Nobel's people, his peeps, are like, uh, hey, Alfred? Well, well, no. Hey, Alfie? Because they're, they're tight, you know, they're his yeah. homies. So, hey, Alfie, should we, like, tell him you're not dead and shit? Should we send him a letter, I don't know, telegram, smoke signals, whatever? And Alfred Nobel's like, hell no, bitches. This is my chance to see what people think of me. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt these journalists are right now uh, in their mansion writing the articles. Alfred Nobel, the brave and humble inventor of dynamite, which made the world better, and now he's dead, and God will miss him. He had such a big penis. So... So the newspapers write their articles, and um, uh, so yeah, the newspapers did run fucking mistaken obituaries for Alfred Nobel. They were not nice. No. Yeah, uh, all the articles were all Alfred Nobel, the fucking asshat who invented dynamite. Killing so many people because it's dangerous because it was just invented because it's fucking dynamite. Alfred Nobel may burn in fucking hell for that. So many dead. <laughs> now we now he's dead. What an asshole that guy was, right? Yep. Yeah, the reviews of Alfred Nobel, Nobel's life were not so good. One newspaper literally called him Alfred Nobel, the inventor of death. You know what? <laughs> So so that stunned the very much alive Alfred Nobel, and he thought, oh, man, I thought people would fucking love me for my invention, but, but Alfred Nobel's fake news death showed him that people hated him, and that caused him to go into crisis mode, like, guys, 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 come on, we got to turn this around, okay, because we got to make people love me, because, guys, people hate me, people actually hate me, so what can we do, we got to turn this around, okay, so that... When people think of my name, they think of good things. They think of happiness. They think of whatever the opposite of death is. So so how? what can we do that when people think of Nobel, they think of peace? There's got to be a way to make uh -huh. people think of Nobel oh peace. God. But how? How do we do it? Uh, let's think here. Nobel peace. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. What if we give out a gift certificate to Arby's? No, that won't work. But but it, it, I don't know. There's got to be something. We got to make people think of my name and be a good thing, you know. So what? And then one of his one of his homies is like, "Hey, Alfie. Hey, Alf. Yeah, for sure. They no doubt called him. Hey, Alf. Hear me out here. Crazy idea. Weird pitch. But what if we gave out a prize. So he got a, a ton of his fucking money that he made from Dynamite and gave it to a university, and the university started the Nobel Prize. And that is, is, that is how Alfred Nobel invented the Nobel Prize and the Nobel Peace Prize and the Nobel Prize for Literature. The Nobel Prize only existed because the inventor of Dynamite tried to change his image. Uh, an egomaniac, basically. Yeah. His, yeah. his image, total narcissist. His image is, is all that's really important, regardless of what he had did and, and the lives that it took. Um, because it's his face on the actual award, too. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, like, 
like like uh, if Oscar had an actual face, and I'm kind of thinking Jack Klugman, you know? Yeah. That yeah. would really be weird if the the award was then called the Jack Klugman Award <laughs> for acting. Yeah. Yeah. The Cluggy. The Cluggy. <laughs> Who's going to bring home the cluggy for acting? But since we had, we had uh, just a, a small little news smattering, something that will be historic sooner or later, uh, did you hear the latest about Eric Trump? Since he kind of no, came up happened? a little? Oh, Eric, Eric Trump now insists, now insists that everybody calls him Syndrome. Nice. Yeah. Syndrome. I am Syndrome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got the outfit. He's got the little the little mask and everything. He's running around the White House. They're trying to keep photographers away from him. Hey, hey, come on, Eric. No, do not call me by that name. That ship has sailed. <laughs> I'm Syndrome now. You son of a gun. You got me monologuing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is too good. Anyway, that is it for Steve's historical approximations this week, for Shap this week. And we sincerely hope that you all enjoyed getting your goddamn learn on. Next week is another one I'm very excited about. Next week we will be discussing one of the world's richest men and how he got his fortune via... A heavy metal band and a very popular TV sitcom. This is an important story. Some other truckers. People need to know this. A heavy metal band and a, and a very popular TV sitcom. One of the richest men on the planet got his money through a heavy metal band and a ridiculously popular TV sitcom. This is an important story that everyone needs to know. I am intrigued. Yeah. So that is next week. So be sure and join us next week for another Steve's Historical Approximations. And cut on that.